everybody, welcome back. Got another more VOD view here. Let's see, console game, Hollywood. This is Gold 2. Uh, this player switched to Moira a little bit later in the first round, so that's why we're skipping ahead here. I've been playing Juno the last two seasons, helped my, and it's helped my Moira gameplay. I'm learning how to rotate and position better. Point when I switched to Moira, it feels like easy mode. This game, the enemy team held the high ground well, and it took four ults to get through the choke. Uh, we ultimately never took first point. One of your recent reviews, you admonished the player for simply existing. Realized that they were winning because we allowed both enemy supports to exist. Made it a point to deny their supports the ability to play the game round two. I think I did well with uh, distract, distracting their supports. Taking hard off angles and, and played and uh, dangerous du duels. So, let's back up a little bit. I... We may not get anything out of this. Um, it might be better on the second round. Um, that said, this is a pretty short match, right? You said you guys don't cap the first, which means I'm sure the enemy team does, unless you guys full hold them. I didn't look if you won or not. Um, but usually stuff like that, this is pretty one-sided, and it's not as obvious when um, there's things you could have done to influence the game in your favor and you also didn't play Moira the whole time so uh, we'll go through this but I, I recommend uh, just for reviews in general to play Moira the entire match and then if it's closer doesn't matter if it's a win or a, a loss if it's closer it'll be a little bit better so so like right now when I'm telling what I'm talking about when people are just existing, you're, that's what you're doing right now. Okay. So. Right now, right? You didn't engage before your tank, right? You don't want to just friggin' fade into these people. Or especially if you don't really know what's going on. This is fine. But the fact is we stayed here. Okay. One, we're standing in the open. Right. If you're going to hold a corner... You need to hold the corner. You can also go over here and hold this corner. Okay. What I would have done in this exact scenario is that I would have faded up here. And I would have pressured both of these players from up here. Okay. Especially because they're really preoccupied. And if you can kill this lamp, um, if they're preoccupied, it looks like the Zarya might be trying to do that. Um, you can kill this bat and then the Rhino will just fall over. Right. Junkrat's up there by himself. I don't really give a shit about him. Okay. But this right here is a, is such a powerful position, especially because their junk's over here and then the Symmetra's here. There's nobody's going to nobody's going to pressure you. There's literally nobody there. Okay. So, Moira's on her way back. But by the time she gets back, you could have definitely killed him, which means you can definitely kill her. Because if she teleports up to you, just go somewhere else. So right here is it's just such a powerful spot. Okay. And you don't even have to fade jump this. You just jump when you fade and it works. So, all right, let's keep going. Yeah, man, that would have been such a better play if you guys would have killed that lamp. Like, you're... you're your Zarya is the one that fucked that up. I saw you were damaging it. There's a trap there, too. Okay, but look at this. Why are you taking damage from this Reinhardt, right? You're taking damage because you're literally right in front of him. Okay. So what you're doing now, like we're standing in the open, but we're at a different angle than our team. What you're doing now you is what the effect of doing this is because you're making the team have to look, the enemy team, look in different directions, right, to look at everybody. The difference is, when you're up here, he can't get to you. He can, but that would be really stupid of him to try and close the distance on you because you're probably going to win that fight. A better BAP, I would say something else. This is not a better BAP. Okay. So, up here, you can shoot an orb at the, the ceiling, and it'll bounce up and down. Um, I would be more likely to just shoot a damage orb at the enemy and then back up if I was taking too much damage. Okay. So... Look at how 
how little of a difference in positioning makes such a massive difference in value. Right? No reason to die there. If we were up there, the Junkrat's on the low ground. It's harder for him to pressure you when he has to shoot up. And you can maintain, maintain a distance from him so he doesn't kill you. So, yeah, I... Uh, I mean, you only had basically like, what, 55 seconds or something to, to make something happen as Moira. Um, and I'm not saying we probably could have flipped that fight, but had you taken that high ground there, you probably would have done um, or contributed way more value. So the way you think about this stuff is... It's not necessarily knowing the maps, right? You should know the maps mostly for pathing, right? Just like, you know, understanding which ways you can go, like this, right? It's good to know Hollywood so you know that you can go this way and go up here, right? The high ground shit, it's just obvious, right? Because it's high ground. Anywhere you go on a map, even if you don't know it, okay, there's high ground, right? Because I have eyeballs, so I can see that this is high ground, this is high ground, et cetera, et cetera, right? Doesn't you don't really have to know the map to know that that stuff is right there because it's literally right in front of you, right? The strategy, because I don't want to teach you how to win on Hollywood. I want to teach you how to win on every map. Okay, so the generic advice that you apply everywhere, and I've I've said this in the last few reviews specifically, um, is. You need to put yourself in a position where you're going to gain the most value for your team and you're going to deny the most value for the enemy team. Let's, let's keep playing. And what that means is if you were on that high ground behind the enemy team, you can heal if you needed to. You can do damage to the enemy team and they're going to have a really hard time doing any of that back at you, right? So it's value, okay? A lot of people, especially in these ranks, trade value, right? And they think that the game is supposed to be played that way. Okay? There, there are, I, I've had these players specifically tell me in matches that the tank is supposed to just take damage. They don't need to use cover because they're the tank. They're supposed to take damage, right? The same thing with the DPS. They're like, well, I'm putting out damage, so who cares if I take damage? Because again, you're trading. You're trading value. Okay, this was this was a risky but very powerful play. I like it. And look, they're Reinhardt. No fucking clue what's going on behind him. Just none. A absolutely clueless, right? And you took advantage of that. It's great. So, but how could we have made that maybe even a little bit better? One, it's it's risky. Really, the reason why it was risky was because of the Hanzo. Ana, whatever. Because I'm not really worried about Ana, especially a low-ranked one, because if she sleeps me, she's not going to wait for me to fade to use her grenade. She's just going to use it by the end of the sleep and try and kill you, and then you just fade, right? But Hanzo can one-shot you, and you got to be careful about that. All right. But yeah, take advantage of this Reinhardt. This is good. No clue what's going on behind him. And that's not to say he should have come back and helped his team. He just shouldn't have engaged. If there's somebody in the back line fucking up the back line, he shouldn't be engaging because he's just going to die like he did, right? But he doesn't He doesn't know that. Ooh, that would have been close. I would have grabbed that Mega just to guarantee that he doesn't get it. Worked out, though. This This is providing value. You're putting pressure on them. You're you're disrupting their attention, right? They're they're being forced to to look around a lot more and not look at your team. We fucked up our fade here. They're, well, yeah, he should have killed you like ten minutes ago. Ah, maybe you guys full hold them. I, it's funny, I, I always forget to just look at that part. Okay, fade here. Okay, booped us. He booped us, so that sucks, but you need to learn how to fade backwards. 
That's going to be really important as you rank up because you were right here when you faded. If you would have faded backwards, you would have been right out the door. Okay. And knowing this, this is where map knowledge is really important, right? For pathing, it's so you can do it without having to look. So if you're here and he boops you and you fade backwards, one, you're facing this way. They're probably going to keep running this way for a couple of seconds before their brain registers the fact that you're behind them. Okay. Now, there's a chance that they'll catch you, right? Especially because they have a Lucio. But it's way better than what we did. And I, I suppose that you could even tie this a little bit more upstream of, of this decision um, was that we kind of overstayed our welcome there. You can flank, but you can't flank when the whole team's there. They're just going to fuck you up, right? Moira can't really do that anymore. She can pick on people that aren't being helped, right? And Ana's one of those, right? Because the Lucio wants to be speeding him around, right? The Reaper wants to be up in people's shit. He's not going to just babysit the Ana. He's probably going to be the major issue with trying to pick on their Ana because he's probably going to be somewhat close to her. Okay. So that's a little bit risky, but you can absolutely still do it. Okay. Now this guy's on BAP, so that changes the dynamic a little bit, right? And this is where you understand that um, I'm good with that fade. Aggressive fades are great. So you have to understand that your, your role against the enemy team and what options you have is fluid. It's not set in stone, right? If they switch, that changes that changes what you're doing, okay? Or how you're going to apply your um, strategy to their back line. So, we actually got our fade forced out there because we were standing in the open. And we had our back to the enemy team. There was no reason for you to stay here. Especially in the middle of the street. If you wanted to fade, you could fade over to here. You can still damage him as he's backing up. And then by the time anybody pushes you, you'll have fade again. You can fade out to your team. So that's, again, that is a map knowledge thing. But the general advice is get away from being in the open. Get away from taking damage you don't need to take. There's no reason for you to take damage from that Genji. Okay, So you're just you're feeding the enemy value. Right? Crap. Actually, this will... Actually, be pretty close to 15 minutes for once in my life. So, big picture. You need to understand why this shit works. So you can apply it everywhere. And the reason it worked is because you were denying the enemy value while getting value yourself, right? You're picking on the enemy, Ana. You're doing damage to her. You're pulling her attention away from her team. Okay? That is value. That is value you were generating... And it's, it's better than the value that the Ana is going to be able to provide to her team or against you while you're picking on her, right? So if you would have gone on the high ground on attack, like I would have said, that's almost identical to what you, d you started doing in this round, right? It's the same exact concept. Right? And that's why I don't want to teach you how to just do, do stuff on, on specific maps. I want you to understand the theory of how am I going to get the most value while denying the enemy theirs. Right? So that means not taking damage. So put yourself in a position where you can do damage to the enemy, but you're not going to take any from them. Right? Now it's impossible to do that perfectly. Right? Because the other team's trying to do the same thing. But in these ranks, people aren't doing that shit. Okay. And that's why if you start doing that, you're going to run these people over. It's just it's just crazy. When I went from Diamond, I was stuck in Diamond for a really long time. And it was kind of for similar reasons, right? I, I didn't really know why what I was doing was or was not working. And once I figured that out, I went from Diamond to, to, to GM1 in the same season, right? It, it's, it's just it, it's crazy how fast that stuff happens once you just kind of take it all in so um yeah so let's use let's use pathing a little bit better always can use cover a little bit better of course and then understand why something is or is not working okay and when you do that you're going to be able to look better look for the opportunities where you can get the value that you're looking for so um good
looks like you, you guys uh, held them too, so that's awesome. Um, so I, I guess that ended up being kind of a close game, uh, but it was a little short. But I, I we got enough out of it, so uh, good ult here. Obviously, we didn't really cover any ults, um, I, I, and I don't want to yet. I want to. I basically want to focus on why we are in certain places and why it's going to work or not work. So cool. All right. Well, that'll about do it for this one. Let me know if you have any questions, and good luck.